Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and today sees the return of a constructor who made one of one of my favourite puzzles that ever appeared on the channel. It's a puzzle that appears in our upcoming book uh, and it's Resar's Thermocouples um, which was so astonishing uh, that it literally almost made me cry in the course of the video. Uh, we christened that video the Miracle Sudoku 2 um, because the opening position in Reesar's puzzle was very sparse, just like the original Miracle Sudoku, and the logic was to die for. Um, it was quite, quite extraordinary. And if, I will try and remember to put a card on the screen up there um, so that if you haven't had a chance to try that puzzle, you give yourselves you know, half an hour of pure bliss because it is one of the great great puzzles um, anyway this uh, this puzzle on screen is by Resar um, he calls this one circle inversion I don't know why uh, his email where he suggested we might like to try this on the channel says that this one is approachable now that is a loaded loaded adjective isn't it we have to hope he means that in the uh, Antony sense rather than in the Goodliffe sense um, and I'm sure he does. Um, but anyway, I'm, uh, what I have no doubt about is that we're in for a treat. Um, before we get started and I read you the rules, let me just say, uh, do have a look at Groundhog Day Sudoku, which is our monthly reward over on Patreon at the moment. Um, I know hundreds of you have enjoyed those puzzles. How do I know this? Well, we've had hundreds, literally hundreds of correct solutions, many of which have eulogized um, about the puzzles and especially the penny drop. Um, there is a very, very cute feature uh, to the puzzles in the Groundhog Day Sudoku uh, series that I think people will enjoy. So, um, yeah, do have a look if you've not had a look. I will try and also remember to put a card about Patreon on the screen now. If you, if you don't see the card, then just click the link. There's some links about Patreon under the video. Um, now, the rules of Resar's puzzle. Let me read them to you. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. In cages, digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage, and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So that's normal killer Sudoku. Uh, and then we've got clues outside the grid give the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. There's only one indicated diagonal. Look, those squares, therefore, have got to sum up to 14. And digits may, uh, may repeat along these di diagonals. Well, yes. OK, we could have deduced this because... However hard you try, if all these yellow cells have to be different digits, you will struggle to make them add up to 14. Um, so that's the rules. Do have a go yourselves. I mean, this is bound to be an absolute masterpiece. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And what I will say right at the start here is that this opening position screams of... Ard van der Vettering's version of Fistemafel's theorem to me. Now, it does occur to me, if, you, if you've if you never watched a Cracking the Cryptic video before and you've listened to that, uh, you may just think you've, uh, you've been welcomed to a world full of gibberish and I apologise. I will try and explain what I meant by that. Um, I'm not absolutely certain, actually, that this is the way into the puzzle because I'm noticing we've got two Tetris shapes here that don't have values. But I can't not look at this, I'm afraid. This is, well, this is exactly what we did yesterday when we talked about Shy's puzzle. Um, and Shy had built into that puzzle this set equivalence theory idea. And that is how you prove, I think... The relationship between these cells and these cells. So what is that relationship? Maybe I should start there. Uh, let's make these purple. Those are purple. We'll make these green. There we go. Now there are 25 purple squares. That's a 5 by 5 square. There are 16 greens. That's a 4 by 4 square. And what is true in this Sudoku, or indeed any Sudoku, is that the 16 green cells will appear somewhere in the, in the 25 purple cells along with one complete set of the digits 1 to 9. So whatever digits are in these 16 cells will appear absolutely duplicated somewhere within the 25 cells along with a complete set of the digits 1 to 9, which is a pretty remarkable thing. 
Um, now, how do we prove this? We can prove this by, just think about this. I think you start with the columns, don't you? Or the, actually you could start with the rows as well. I'm gonna start with the columns. So let me ask you a question. What's in the purple cells? <laughs> and that may seem like a very simple question or a very complicated question, but I don't mean it to be. Um, what do we find in the purple cells? Well, this is five complete columns of the Sudoku. So we're definitely going to find five complete sets of the digits one to nine in the purple cells. We don't know the order of those digits at all, but we know that there's five sets of the digits one to nine. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Let me ask you a more interesting question. If I wanted to remove those five cells from the purple cells, could we see an elegant way of doing that? Well, what we could think about it, we can think about it in the terms actually of these cells on the right hand side of row one. Because if I remove those cells from the purple cells, I just deduct them out. So in, rather than having 45 cells in, in the purples, I'd be left with, now I've only got 40 cells in the purple. How could we define those cells, those 40 cells that are left? Well, we could say it's five sets of the digits one to nine. Um, or let me, let me suggest it in a different way. Would these cells here, would whatever is in these cells be in the purple cells? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Because remember, the purple cells were five sets of the digits one to nine. Now, if I remove those five cells from one of those sets of the digits one to nine, that set in the purples will still have these green cells in it. So actually, the purple cells that are remaining are simply equal to four sets of the digits one to nine plus the green cells. And we should find that that works because we can see four sets of the digits one to nine, that's 36 digits, plus four cells is 40 digits. I've still got 40 digits highlighted here. So there is an exact, well, there is an equivalence between the green cells here and what, what we find in the purple cells. Let's, let's do it again. Let's try and remove these cells from the purple cells. Now, one way we can do that very simply is to think about these cells, because this whole row is one set of the digits one to nine. Now, at this point, we know that the purple cells are precisely made up of the set of the green cells plus four complete sets of the digits one to nine. I want to focus on just one of those four complete sets. And I'm gonna remove from that one set these cells. So I can say for certain that within those that single set of the digits one to nine, those cells must still be in there. So within the purples, we must have these greens and these greens somewhere. So there are eight greens, so Somewhere within these purples, there will be eight greens. And you can see that what we're left with after that will be 27 cells, i.e. three sets of the digits one to nine. And we can keep doing this. We can do it again in this row. And we'll find that one of the sets will just have these left in. We can do it again with this row. One of the sets will just have these left in. And we get to this point where we haven't touched one of the sets of the digits one to nine. Um, so this is how I would explain Ard van der Vettering's version of Fistemafel's theorem using set equivalent theory. Um, and I hope that made a little bit of sense to people. Um, so Shai uh, likes to talk about this in terms of positive and negative cells. And I quite like that. But I think in order to understand it, you have to understand why, what we're doing. Why, when you deduct out this row of the Sudoku, what you're actually doing, you're, yeah, you can remove these squares from the purples, but these squares will be left in the purples, and that's the key. So 
we reach this point. So now, what do we do with this? How does it help us solve the puzzle? The answer is I haven't got a Scooby-Doo because it might not help us solve the puzzle, but I'm gonna hope that it does because now in the greens, we have got cages that sum to 26, uh, 39, 58. So the green cells sum up to 58 plus this T tetromino. Um, 58 plus T tetromino. The purples, okay, what have we got down here? We've got 26, 47, 71, 79, 98. So we had 58 here. This side we've got 98 plus this L tetromino. And we know that the purples are equal to the greens plus one set of the digits one to nine. So the greens have another 45 because we know that one set of the digits one to nine, if you add up the digits one to nine, you get 45. So this, if I add 45 to 58, I get 103. So now we know that this tetromino has to be exactly five less than this. This is no use. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh no. Because this is 98 plus this, and this is 103 or the equivalents tells us that this needs to be 103 plus that. So the difference between these te these four cell regions is five, and that means nothing to me. Ah, bobbins, <laughs> resar. Okay, you've, ah, uh, sorry, I don't, right. Okay, we'll get rid of the coloring and we'll think again. So, right, what? <laughs> I have to completely reset my mind now. This is not what we had to do. I was so sure. I mean, this is so... It's so perfectly designed <laughs> to have to use this. <laughs> oh, you rotter. Um, right, okay. An eight cage has got to have a one in it. Another eight cage down here has got to have a one in it. We can... All the rest of the cages, of course, are useless totals. So the 14 diagonal must be the key, I think. Right, so probably what we need to do is to work out how close to the minimum 14 is. So if we try and keep this diagonal as low as we can, we could put one and two in there, one in here, one and two in there, one, one, two. So you get three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven on this diagonal would be a minimum, but we need fourteen. So there's actually there's a bit of flexibility there that's we need to get rid of. Right, okay. Well, we, I can get rid of one, one degree of flexibility. Looking at the eight cage, those two cells definitely can't both be one because then you couldn't put one in the eight cage and that will break the eight cage. So, so we can view these two squares as like another set of the digits one and two. So now I'm up to 12 as the minimum and I need to get rid of two more degrees of freedom. Let's go hunting. Can we do the same with this eight? Look, we can, right, if that was one and that was one, there would be a problem, which, Oh, but that's no good because I could still put one in those two squares in that instance and that would leave this square available to be a one. Ah! So it's not that. So we've got to look. So at the moment, two of these squares could increase in value by one or one of them could increase in value by two and that is not actually that helpful um, hmm. 
What am I missing? 13 cage in four cells. That's got to have a one in it as well. It feels like the ones are the important digits. So let's think about that. Uh, there is there's something going on there, isn't there? So if... Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. That is that is really gorgeous. Look, yeah, look. Ah, this is yeah, this is just beautiful. This is this is what we come for when we do resar puzzles. Let us look at this. If this cell is not a one, then you can see that in the thirteen cage and the eight cage, the ones are confined to column two and column three of the Sudoku. How many ones do we expect there to be in column two and column three of this Sudoku? This is not a trick question. There will be exactly one one in this column. There will be exactly one one in this column. So if I know that those two ones are confined to these six cells, you can't put a one in either of those squares. So if this is not one, you cannot put a one in box one. It's impossible. Or oh, no, yeah, let me be precise. No, there will be a one in box one, but it won't be in those two squares. It'll be there, one of those three squares. Now, if on the other hand, this is a one, you can't put a one in those two squares. So either there's no one in these two, or there's no one in these two, and that gets rid of two degrees of freedom. Because if, for example, there's no one there, in either of these, what digit can I replace them with? Well, it, the best I'll do is three. But now, rather than summing up to three, being a one and a two, they now sum up to five, being a two and a three. And that closes the gap completely on, in terms of degrees of freedom. So this is absolutely perfect. Um, right, so we now know that one of these pairs is a 2-3 pair and one of these pairs is a 1-2 pair. We know, phone is buzzing at me, I should just check that actually, sorry. Um, no, it's fine. Um, now, where was I? I was thinking, yeah, we know that, yeah, so we know that this, this is like a weird 1-2 pair going across these boxes. This is definitely a 1-2 pair down here. One of these is a 2-3, one of these is a 1-2. Um, can we see which way around this goes? Oh yeah, you can. You can. This is gorgeous as well. If this is a 1, this becomes a 2-3 pair. How do we make the 13 cage work? The answer is you can't make it work. 4, 5 and 6 add up to 15, not 13. So this, this, once, ah, this is lovely. So once you work out that this would have to be a 2, 3 pair if this is a 1, it breaks the 13 cage. Well, it assures you this can't be a 1. So that's not a 1, which means we get this arrangement in column 2 and column 3. We know the 1s are locked into those squares. There is no 1 up there. This becomes the 2-3 pair. This becomes a 1-2 pair. There's a 1 on the left-hand side of box 1. There is a... Hmm, there's probably more to do here. We can go... 13 cage... Oh yeah, okay, the 13 cage. How are we going to make 13 in three cells without using 1 and 2? There's only one way, 3, 4 and 6. Um, okay, can we, what do we do next? We can, can we use some of these sort of weird pairs that are going across the grid? Or we could, 
we know actually look we know there's a one here and a one in one of those two so the one in box eight is in the bottom row would be quite useful if it was in the 24 cage that would seriously restrict that cage 13 one, three, four, six. ah this square can only be five or seven one, two, three, four. Yeah, because it can't be eight or nine in a four cell 13 cage. If you put eight in here, those three squares would have to add up to five. But the minimum we could make three cells add up to if they've all got to be different is six with one, two and three. So this is a five or a seven. So if this is five, the 13 cage, these three squares have to add up to eight without using five. So they'd have to be one, one, three, four. If this is seven, this is one, two, three. So there's always a three, that's interesting. There's always a three in here, but the other digit is either a two or a four. But the, th ah, okay, but we can look, look at threes. We know there's a three in one of those cells. We know there's a three in one of these cells. So where does the three go in row four of the grid? It's not in those cells, it's not in those cells, it's actually not in that cell. There is definitely a three in the 19 cage now. And we've got threes aligning in columns two and three, a bit like the, uh, whatever it was, was it ones we looked at earlier? So three has got to appear in the left-hand side of column uh, column one. Okay. So is that, is that useful? Yeah. Oh, the other thing it does, of course, by th you, you now can't put three in the eight cage in box seven. So box seven is now a one, two, five trip. Oh, this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable the way this is bouncing back and forwards. This is now a one, two, five. There's a two, three up here. So where do we put two now? Yeah, where do we put two in column one of the grid? It can't go there, it can't go there. So two is locked into those three squares and therefore it's not in here, which means this square cannot be a seven. This is a five. And this lot are a one, three, four triple. The one, three, four marries up with the four now in box five. So four is also locked into the top of box six. And down here, the two marries up with the two over this side. That means a two is in one of those cells. And you can't, ooh, you can't put a one and a two in a 24 cage. That won't work because the other two cells will have to add up to 21. And no matter how hard we try, it won't work. So this square has to be a one or a two. Um, that gives us a one, two pair in that column look. Fours. Um... Okay, so this box now, we've, we've actually placed approximately at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So these squares are 7, 8 and 9. Therefore the 13 cage needs a 6, 5 or a 4 to complete it. I think all of those might be possible. Um, now, okay. One thing I will say at this point, though, is I love the way that these these triples keep bouncing back and forward between rows and columns. It is very, very clever. Three, four here would make those have to add up to 12 without using three and four. That would be a five, seven pair. That would be very handy. That would give us the eight cage as a one, three, four triple. Three, four. So the only other way is the four is there. Is there a reason this can't be a nine? I don't know. Uh, what cages can we use here? We, we've got ones and twos down here. 
Oh, right, okay, hang on. The 21 cage, therefore, hasn't... It definitely hasn't got a 1 or a 2 in it. 3, 4, 5... Yeah, okay, so let's look at the 21 cage. If the 21 cage doesn't have a 3 in it either, the best we could do, the minimum we could put into the four squares, would be 4, 5, 6 and 7. It sounds like a spitfire is going over. Um, 4, 5, 6 and 7 in here. Now if this is 4, 5, 6 and 7, what does it add up to? 22. That's not good enough. So there must be a 3 in here. Um, and that 3 is not there. Oh, not there because of our pencil knot. So there's a 3 in one of those 3 squares. And that, <laughs> that aligns with the 3's here. Oh, yeah, look at this. It aligns with the 3's here. So where does the 3 go in column 6? It's not in any of those 6 cells. It's in the 18 cage. Let's pause and therefore examine the 18 cage. It needs 2 cells in it that add up to 15. Well, they can't be 7 and 8 now, because then we'd have to put 9 in both of those squares. So this, 13, this 18 cage is known. That's 3, 6, 9. Therefore, 9 is not in those cells. Therefore, this is 9. That... That, oh, this is, yeah, th this now helps me over here again, doesn't it? Because now this can't be 9, this can't be 4. And if this can't be 4, this becomes a 3-4 pair. I don't blame myself for not being able to figure out that this was the 9 in this box. That was quite tricky to do. 3-4 um, here, so these are 5 and 7, because they have to add up to 12 without using 3-9 or 4-8. These three squares now in the eight cage are not one, two, five, they are one, three, four. And for my next trick, I will come to a grinding halt, I think. Oh, really? These squares, therefore, have got to be 2, 6, 8, and 9. Uh, is that helpful? Ah, there's, so there's definitely a 2 in these squares. There's definitely a 2 in these squares. So there must be a 2 in this domino. It doesn't quite align with anything. Um, Okay, so what do we do next? Three, six, and nine. Three, six, nine, and seven, eight. Uh, oh, and one, two. This column is very congested. This has to be a four, five pair at the bottom of the column. So now my 21 cage can't have a 5 in it as well as all the other things that were restricting it. So, ah, okay, so if the 21 cage doesn't have a 4 in it, it would, the best it could be would be 3, 6, 7 and 8. And 6, 7 and 8 add up to 21 before you even include the 3. So there is a 4 in the 21 cage and it's not in those cells because there's a 4 in the box. That's a 4, that's a 4, that's a 5. There's a 4 down here, there's not a 5 here anymore, so there's a 5, 5, there's a 5 down here as well, and the 5 can't be in column 9, so all sorts of restrictions getting imposed. This 4 fixes that there's no 4 there, which gives us a 4 here, so there's a 4 over there. Now there's a 1, 3 pair here, which fixes that one, that's a 2, that's a 3. There's now a 1, 2, 3 triple in column 3, so this square's a 5. Now there's a 1, 2, 3, 4 quadruple in that column. I can't actually read what that says. What does that say? No, uh, this is a 19 cage. Oh, so we can do some maths on this box. 19 and 12 is 31, so those squares have got to add up to 14, so that one can't be a 3. And in, 
Oh, hang on, that means they have to be six and eight, don't they? There's a five already used. Let's just double check my maths. 31, 45, which is the total for the whole box, minus 31 is 14. These do have to be six and eight. And, okay, we might not know the order, but at least that's probably useful. Now, do we know actually what this 21 cage is now? Because it's got seven in it from the three and the four. So it needs another 40, it needs another 14 without using five. So this is three, six, eight. Now, what does that mean then? Does that mean I ought to be able to work out what goes in here, shouldn't I? There's now got to be a nine, there's got to be a nine and a seven in the 24 cage because I've not put those in this box yet. So there's a nine and a seven. I can't also have an eight or there'd have to be a zero alongside them. So that's six, that must be an eight. 9, 7, and 6 is 22. We need 24, so there's a 2 in here as well. So this is 2, oopsie, sorry, this is 2, 7, 9. This is a 1. That's a 2. That's a 1. This is 3, 7, 9 into the 19 cage. There's a 3, three 2, 7, 9 quadruple along here now. So this is 4, 5, and 8. That's not five still. Get rid of the threes pencil marked. And okay, that's not nine. What else can we do here? We can, I've got to remember these are a one, two pair. I mean, I haven't been able to use that yet, but what else have we got? Oh, I tell you one thing we've got. I'm not sure whether I should use this or not, but I now, what did we work out? We worked out that this, I can't remember which way around it was. This was had to be five different from that. What does this add up to? This adds up to 25. Oh, if that was 30, that would be huge. You could write in six, seven, and nine into those squares because there's only one way to make 30 and four squares. So which way round was it? I can't actually remember. I'm not even sure if I should do that. I haven't needed to use Fistimafel or Art of Andvettering's version of it so far. I'll carry on just for a moment, just to see if I can do it without that. Nine has to go in there. Um. So nine has to be in one of those two squares using the normal trickery around where does nine now go in this column? Seven, eight, three, four, six. Um, eight, oh, eight's there, look, by Sudoku. So this becomes a three, six pair. Oh, this row is very, is almost finished that's a seven nine pair into those squares and there's a five seven up here so this is nine this is seven these squares have to be three and six that might be useful I can see I can get rid of three from that cell and I can get rid of two from this cell can we go further than that? Quite possibly. Um, now, let's just find some more logic here. We can... I, mean, I can feel, I keep coming back to this. I can feel myself being drawn to, to using this. Um, it is tempting, I have to say. It is tempting. Let me just, I'm just going, <laughs> I just want to spend a moment to see whether I can do it without, without it. I hope you'll forgive me. Um, it's not the longest video yet in the world anyway, is it? So, 
that's not three. That's ah, uh, that's look, that's not two. So the two is in one of those. Oh, we already knew this. Um, four is not there. There's all sorts of like little digits we can pick off here and there. Yeah, look at that. There's now a three six pair here, so that becomes a four. There's now a three six pair here as well. That's so strange. Um, there's a four up in one of those two cells in box two. Threes, ones. Two, yeah, hang on, look, the two now is not there. So the two is in one of three cells in box six, which means it's not it's not in here. I bet this is six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a two now. Five, six, seven, and eight. This square, ah, that square, look, sees a five and a six. It can only be a seven or an eight, which means this square is a five or a six. That square is not three by Sudoku, so the three goes in the corner. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. I like that one. Um, so, Okay, let's try and finish this off. These have got to be seven, eight, nine. It's, oh, whoopsie. Oh, you know what? That is a quadruple. Sorry, I didn't spot that until I just looked at it now. I've got two, six, eight, and nine into four cells. So this, this square is a seven. It can't be two, six, eight, or nine. That's that. That is actually quite straightforward. That gives me a nine here, and that's going to put a. Oh, that does all sorts of things. That gives me an eight here, which gives me a seven here, which gives me a six here. That gives me a six and a three, a three. Oh goodness, this one four gives me a two here. That's part of a one two pair. This becomes a one. The one and the four go in. That should be a one, that should be a four. I, th I think I might be have to do this without re recourse to Fistimavel. Let's see, five, six, and eight. That three is fixing the six here, therefore that's a six. The five and the eight is resolved by the eight in that box. That becomes a five. Um, so if we look at this column, look, we've got six, seven, and nine to place. So the six has to be in these two squares. This is a five by Sudoku. Yeah, so this, yeah, okay, so th this is six, seven, and nine, and that was 25. Yeah, so the way it was hopefully worked was that these squares had to be five less than these. So if you revisit the start of the video and see what I said, hopefully that's what I said. If I didn't, um, I misled you mightily. This is a five, this is a seven, this is a two. Still haven't quite figured out the ending of this, this one twos on the 14 diagonal. That's a nine, that's a three. That means there's a nine here by Sudoku, look. 2, 6, 8. So these squares have got to be 4 and 5. We like that. We can put those in. These have got to be 7 and 8. We like that. We can put those in. That gives us a 2 at the bottom of the grid. 7, 9, 3, 6. This 7 gives us the 8 here. Um, 2, 6 here means that square's an 8. The 6 here means this square's a a six that's a two that gets us the oopsie that gets us the two and the one figured out the one and the two figured out that's oh whoopsie that's another misstep get rid of those erroneous pencil marks or those leftover pencil marks that are going to confuse me this should be a five so in this column we still haven't placed nine that means this is a nine Six and the seven is resolved. That fixes the seven and the nine. That fixes the nine and the seven. Is the four eight doable or the three four doable? Not quite. Uh, 
So presumably I'm missing something very simple here, but we should be able to finish this by focusing on this box. Uh, one, five, seven, and eight place. So this is a five, seven pair, we know the order. This is a one, eight pair, we also know the order of that. And this one, I think, will hopefully go through the puzzle, and it does. So eight, four at the bottom, four, three here, we click check, and that is how to solve another brilliant, brilliant puzzle by Resar. I loved that. That is very clever. I wasted about 10 minutes at the start talking about a trick that, well, I could have used towards the middle or the, the end of the puzzle. Um, but at that point, I was quite determined not to because I think almost Resar didn't want us to. Because to set it up like this and then make it so it doesn't need Ard van der Vettering is almost saying we don't need these uh, uh, high-powered geometry tricks. We can do it just with this beautiful logic that emerged down this 14 diagonal. It was gorgeous. And the way these uh, pairs, especially the ones, two, threes, and fours, kept interacting around the grid was a joy. So let me know how you got on. I do read the comments. I do enjoy them, especially when you're kind to me. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.